Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams. We are previewing the 2022 college football season here on the summit today, and our college football previews this summer are presented by the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. I am privileged to be joined by the head football coach of the Mid American Nazarene Pioneers, as our first stop is in Olathe, Kansas, Coach Paul Hansen, who is in his third year with the program. Coach, last season a three and eight record, but it was your first 11 game schedule. Uh, in your job there with Mid-American Nazarene. So what are your takeaways from last season, and and uh, do you build on anything coming into this year? Yeah, yeah. First, uh, thanks for having me, and uh, it's always good to talk to you, and uh, I really appreciate the coverage. And, uh, yeah, kind of going on to last season, uh, you know, it was just good to finally have a 11-game season, uh, you know, and and, uh, and kind of have a normal, a, normal, a normal season was really big for us. First year I was here, you know, we – we got we had eight games scheduled. We got up to seven, and you know you never know if you're going to have a game. So uh, it was really it was a really tough season. So this last one was really good to kind of be with our guys for eleven game season, a full season, and kind of and kind of go through the hack and, and and see you know what 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 that would be like with our with our guys. And so um, obviously we didn't get the results that uh, that we wanted uh, last year. You know being three and eight, um, I, we 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 lost three games by a total of seventeen points. So um, if you watch us the whole season, we, we did some really good stuff. But kind of, kind of going into this next year, kind of, there's some stuff that we saw that could help propel us into this next year uh, with a lot of young guys and, and really see what they can do to help take the next step uh, in this program here at Mid America. Coach, it's always uh, a privilege, I'm sure, for you to have young guys if you can see the potential there and you know that the future looks bright. Well, I want to start with the quarterback position because you had three players that saw significant time there last year. C.J. Fowler, uh, season-opening quarterback, had an injury. He goes out. Uh, Blake Atkins is a senior. He saw a significant amount of time for you as well, as did Adrian Parsons, sophomore. And it looks like you may have some competition in the camp this fall. Yeah, you know, uh, I think that was the first thing when, when I got the job two years ago is uh, you're, you're never as good uh, as your quarterback. So we had to make sure that we had a really good depth there. And uh, kind of going to last camp last year, C.J. Fowler, who was with me at uh, Western New Mexico, he came with me here and uh, he, he, he won the job and he was playing really well until he had that really bad injury. And then Blake, who's played a lot of a lot of games for us, um, did a good job of coming in and uh, and doing really well. And then uh, the Missouri Valley game, he actually broke he broke his hand uh, in, in, on a play. You, you can always tell when something's not right. So I called timeout, and it came over, and it, he was hurt. So Adrian, uh, we were trying to kind of hold him off a little bit last year just to kind of redshirt him and kind of let him get a feel for the game. And uh, his first play comes in, runs for a touchdown. And so <laughs> – uh, we're like, well, I guess that works. So he, he came in and did a good job for Blake when Blake was out. And then uh, and so it, we had really good competition there all throughout the year. And uh, Coach Collins is our uh, our quarterback coach. He actually played for me back in 2015 and 16. And he does a great job with our guys. He, he has some pro experience as well. So he does a good job of getting those guys ready. Well, Coach, you mentioned Parsons and, and that first play, and, and I, I have to stay here for just a moment because it's it's just too big a deal. Uh, final game of the season, season finale, and you all are on the road at Benedictine, and Parsons just went off. He really did. 659 passing yards in the game, four touchdowns thrown. Oh, he ran for 49 more yards and another touchdown as well. Now, I realize that in a game like this, uh, you all fell 70 to 56, 126 points on the board, you know, you find, kind of wonder, is defense optional in this one? But to get to see a performance like that from a young man, freshman year, setting an NAI record, that that had to be fun to watch. Yeah, you know, it was. And, you know, uh, obviously we want to win every game. There's no moral victories. Um, so, <laughs> right, right. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, you know, if we can go on to this year and have a, uh, a really good season, um, that might be the game. It's like, hey, look about, hey, we didn't win that game, but a lot of good stuff came out of that game. And, you know, uh, it was his first start, and he did a good job. And, you know, uh, one thing we have here really good, we have really good receivers, and uh, our receivers did a good job of getting open and getting to the spots on the field um, to, to make the plays. And then really our O-line, we had a, we had a pretty young O-line last year, and uh, I got all those guys back this year. And so they did a good job of giving Adrian time for his first start. 
And uh, so it was, it was obviously it was a it was a team effort on the offensive side to to uh, put that many points up because I mean really with his rushing yards you know, he had over seven hundred something yards total offense himself. Yes. And so um, that's a good week. That's a good week for about three <laughs> weeks. And so for some teams. So if we could figure out how to build on that uh, just a, as a whole as a team, and um, you know s- some good stuff could happen. Coach, and by the way, that that is something you mentioned that it's it's sometimes overlooked, but I think as big a deal as anything when you're bringing back your entire offensive line like that. I, I just don't think that can be understated. Yeah, I mean, in, in my career, I've never had um, every offensive line back, uh, every member who started the year before back, and so having that this season, that's another thing to build on, um, and so. And it's keeping those guys getting stronger in the weight room and, and getting more familiar with the offense and stuff like that. That's really, really big. We're speaking now here on the summit on Midwest Sports Net. And I would appreciate it if you would like this this video and please subscribe to the channel too. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Our college football previews are presented by the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. And with Coach Paul Hansen from Mid America Nazarene. Coach, uh, you were talking about your receivers. Let's go ahead and, and uh, stay right there again for just a little bit longer. Caleb Tannis coming back for his junior season, a second team All American. He led the NAI in touchdown receptions with. 22 of those third in the NAIA in receiving yards per game 123 and a half yards per game so obviously no matter who comes out of the quarterback battle I mean there's a good starting place right there yeah I mean he's uh he he has you know almost 2,000 yards receiving in a season and a half really <laughs> and uh and so in 27 touchdowns so he uh you know he, he's a great player i think he's one of the best in the country to be honest with you he's really good i've had a lot of really good players in, in my time and he's up there for sure and, and really he, he probably should have been first team all american last year if you look at the stats compared to other guys but um, they do it by region and uh, the culver stockton offensive lineman he's in the nfl camp he's a senior he was a four-time all american you have jd woods at baker who is all american the all-time lean rusher uh, he was with the seahawks and so uh you know, Caleb's only a sophomore. So, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, he, he has some big things he could keep working on. And really with this COVID year, he still has three years to play. And so he could go down as one of the all-time greats um, statistically. Uh, he's already kind of that for the program, but just kind of going forward, his, his future is very bright. And so it's, re- it's really cool to have. Coach, we've talked about your offense a lot. I do want to mention the defense just a little bit. And and you look at the schedule from last season. It's a defense that that really, quite frankly, gave up a lot of points. I mean, I mean a number of thirty plus point ball games on the other side of the scoreboard. Uh, are you looking at some adjustments? And and uh, how are you approaching the twenty two season on the defensive side? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, a big thing is just having cons- being consistent on that side of the ball. And uh, you know, Coach Cordova came in last. Uh, he pulled in the day before spring ball. Uh, he was a new defense coordinator for us, and so um, we had to put a new scheme in last spring. And and really trying to get the players that fit the system that we're trying to run. And you know, we have seven returning starters back on defense this year. So like we were pretty young in a couple positions and. And, and really, a lot of those needs that uh, that we needed, uh, we filled with recruiting and transfers. And so we feel pretty good about that. But, you know, we have the top three returning uh, tacklers back from last season. And, you know, Troy Hall was all-conference safety for us. He had six interceptions last year and, and three touchdowns. You know, you have, uh, you know, Kid Dickerson, who was, uh, he had, he was second in the team in tackles uh, with 51 tackles. You have Trey Matt Pledger, who – he uh, was we was kind of a box guy last year. I think we're going to kind of get him on the, uh, you know, more um, outside linebacker tart this year. You know, he was top in tackles for us, too. So having all those guys back who uh, have played um, will help be good leaders for the young guys that we're going to put in other positions, which we feel pretty good about. Coach, you were talking about the spring of last year. Talk about the spring uh, this year then. What, what, what have you seen in them right now that you think this, this could be a positive? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very competitive, you know, and, and when you have a younger team, that means a lot of times you go through tension, you keep your guys, you have more guys out for spring ball. And so um, it wasn't just the first team that was competitive, it was the second team and the third team. So we had we had a very good competitive spring game, uh, spring practices, everything we did was a competition type base. And our, and our guys just did a really good job of buying into this offseason. It comes in with uh, good leadership, too. Um, we don't have – and we only have six or seven seniors this year. 
So that, I mean, mm -hmm. that tells you how young we were this last year. And so to have all that good young talent back and buying into the system we're trying to do, it, it's very exciting. We have a lot of guys that, uh, there's just a lot of energy right now around here. So it's, it's really good. Well, the season really is not that far away then at this point. I realize we're in the early part of the summer right now, but I know you're just going to blink a couple of times and, and it'll be time for camp and then the season to follow. Coach, you, you open the year with uh, – on, at home, excuse me, taking on Graceland, hosting Graceland August 27th. You have a late August game, and then the next week you're on the road at Culver Stockton. Graceland, one of the games that you won last year, and it's your season opener. So uh, how do you see the season starting? Yeah, you know, uh, Graceland will come in here. Uh, Pat, they have a new head coach, Pat Pat Ross, who's a really great um, great coach. Um, he, you know, he, he took a, a Lindenwood program that was uh, not winning any games and took him to the playoffs and the national championship all within 10 years. And so he uh, he'll they'll be ready. Um, you know, uh, they'll do a good job recruiting. They'll come here. So we'll have to be ready to play. We'll have to uh, to be, be ready for the season. And uh, I think our guys are up to to the to to the task for sure. All right. Well, Coach, success to you all this season, and I appreciate you taking time, and, and we appreciate everyone for watching this college football preview, again presented by the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. Uh, Paul Hanson, third year at Mid-America Nazarene, and success to the Pioneers this season, Coach. Awesome. Thank you, and uh, hopefully give you some good material to uh, talk about this year.